There was a time, not that long ago, when trucks were simple utility vehicles. If you wanted to buy one, you picked your manufacturer of choice, probably Ford, Chevy, or Dodge, figured out how much you wanted to tow or haul, and then bought the truck with the capabilities that matched your budget. Today, it's a little bit more complicated. Trucks are still hauling as much as ever, but they're also expected to drive nicely, have comfortable interiors, and even modern technology. In the face of stiffer competition and higher expectations, let's see how the Silverado 1500 stacks up. But this isn't just any Silverado. This is the Z71 Redline Edition, which in my humble opinion, looks pretty badass. Redline is primarily a graphics package that sees the grill and bow tie blacked out, red highlights on the toe points and logos, and of course those red lines on the wheels. In fact, just about the only place on the truck that doesn't have Redline is the tachometer, where it's curiously absent. The Z71 package adds even more visual flair, but does bring some functionality to the table, like beefier suspension, armor on the transfer case, a locking rear diff, and hill descent control for an as-configured price of a whopping $59,610. Our truck came standard with a 5.3 liter V8, putting down 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. That may sound like a lot, and it is, but keep in mind this is a big heavy truck and so you shouldn't be expecting to win too many drag races from stoplights. Not that I would ever encourage that kind of behavior. That engine is mated to an 8-speed transmission that gives very smooth shifts and has plenty of ratios whether you're trying to pull a boat out of a lake or trying to get the most MPGs out on the highway. And the engine will actually help you in that regard. It can shut down four of its cylinders, turning itself into a big old V4. Our truck was officially rated at 15 miles per gallon city and 20 on the highway with 17 combined. In our mixed testing, we did exactly that at 17 miles per gallon. If you're looking for more economy, the smaller 4.6 liter V6 will do up to 24 on the highway, while those looking for more power can step up to the 6.2 liter V8 with 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. That motor will let the Silverado 1500 tow a massive 12,500 pounds. That puts it ahead of the F-150 by a whopping 300. But hey, when things are as close as they are on this segment, a win's a win. We've got the crew cab, so there's plenty of room for full-size adults in the back, and up front we have two seats that are both heated and ventilated. But I wouldn't be surprised if you're having a hard time seeing any of that because it is really, really dark in here. Materials are nice enough and they feel durable too, but there is just not a lot of contrast on the inside of this truck. In the dashboard, we've got Chevy's MyLink system, which we'll go through in a separate video. It's got integrated navigation, plus support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There's a 4G LTE system, Chevy's Team Driver system, and a whole lot of ports too. I've got a 110, two 12 volts, and two USBs right up here in the dashboard. Open the glove box, and I've got another pair of USBs. That's great if you're sitting up front, but if you're in the back, you don't even get any USB ports, and that's just rude. On the driver assistance front, our Silverado packs lane keep assist that'll steer you back should you start to wander, plus front emergency auto braking and collision alert. That's all great, but it's still missing a lot, even basic things like blind spot monitoring. There's no adaptive cruise, and while the rear camera is a blessing, especially when connecting a trailer, a 360 overhead view would make parking a beast like this a whole lot easier. And while you can start the truck remotely, there's no proper keyless entry here or keyless ignition, meaning you're going to be fumbling for that key fob anytime you want to go anywhere. At speed, the Silverado definitely feels like the big truck that it is. The steering is relaxed and the acceleration is modest, but overall the ride quality is actually remarkably good for something capable of towing not one but two luxury German sedans. It doesn't crash over bumps or get too jittery over road imperfections, and while it does feel a little bit floaty at speed, especially on the highway, when you're talking about moving this much mass around, you got to make some compromises somewhere. With its locking 342 rear end, armored drivetrain, and hill descent control, the Z71 also does a solid job off the asphalt. It'll pull itself out of just about any muck without much complaint, but with those painted wheels and all the other visual treats plastered around, we wouldn't recommend too much rock hopping. The Silverado is, as ever, a solid truck, and it'll make a great workday companion. It's lacking a few modern features that we'd like to see, but the ride quality here means this is one of the most comfortable trucks in its class. With the competition experimenting with things like small displacement turbocharged engines and aluminum bodies, the Silverado does feel a little bit traditional. But when it comes to functionality and capability, you're not going to do much better than this.